So fission. In the mid-1930s, Enrico Fermi uh, attempted to synthesize a new element by bombarding uranium with neutrons. So I've told you before that all of those elements with white element symbols on the periodic table are man-made. How do you make a new element? This is how you make a new element. You bombard existing elements and mess with them, right? So the idea here was that you take um, this uranium, you throw neutrons at it, and you get them to stick in the nucleus. And so it would absorb this neutron and make um, uranium-239, and then that would undergo beta decay and form an element with a higher atomic number than was known. So he did get beta emission, but he never was able to identify the product to see if it actually was a new element. It's kind of disappointing. So uh, Lisa Meitner, Fritz Strassmann, and Otto Hahn repeated Fermi's experiments. And they found that the products that were formed by that process were actually lighter than uranium. So he didn't make a heavier element. They were actually lighter. And this was a discovery that changed the world. So January 6, 1939, they reported that neutron bombardment of uranium resulted in nuclear fission, the splitting of the uranium atom. So you can take an atom and split it. You can break the nucleus into big chunks. This isn't spontaneous radiation emitting particles. This is breaking it into pieces. When you do that to uranium-235, um, it breaks into barium-140 and krypton-93. And it does emit neutrons and also a tremendous amount of energy. Less than 1% of uranium is this uranium-235. 238 is the most common isotope. It does not undergo fission. It's uranium-235 that does. And so when they talk in the news about this country or that country is stockpiling uranium, you have to get this particular isotope of uranium out of the naturally occurring mix of radium, uranium in order to, to make weapons of mass destruction, to make nuclear weapons. So if you have a sample of uranium-235, um, it's not going to be pure uranium-235, but you need to have a higher than normal um, amount of it in the sample. So it's enriched. It's enriched in this. And you bombard it, and you break the, the crypt, it into krypton and barium. You bombarded it with neutrons, and the result is that three neutrons come out. Those neutrons can hit nearby uranium-238 nuclei, 235, sorry, uranium-235 nuclei, and cause the splitting of those atoms as well. And then that releases three. So if all of these hit their target, you've got one neutron producing three. That hits three atoms. Each of those produces three. You can see that this expands rapidly. This is called a chain reaction. And if it's not controlled, the energy is going to cause the thing to explode. Critical mass is the amount of 235 that's needed for this reaction to be self-sustaining. If there's not a high enough concentration of 235 nearby, most of these neutrons are just going to hit other things, and the reaction won't continue. It'll fizzle out. But if you, there's a critical mass, where if you have that mass or higher, the, the reaction will be self-sustaining. Once you get it started, it's going to keep going. And that reaction can be used to make a bomb and has been used to make a bomb. So the Manhattan Project in Los Alamos, New Mexico, 
was undertaken um, because we were afraid that Nazi Germany would, would make an atomic bomb first. Um, so the first nuclear weapon uh, was detonated in 1945 in New Mexico. It had a force equivalent to 18,000 tons of dynamite. At this point, Germany had already surrendered, but Japan was involved in the war, and we dropped two bombs on Japan and killed 200,000 people. 